The Transfer of Archimandrite Sebastian's Relics from Serbia to America by Hieromonk Damascene September 1, 2007 marked a celebration of great significance for Orthodoxy in America when the relics of Archimandrite Sebastian Dabovich were interred in the St. Sava Church in Jackson, California the first of many churches founded by Father Sebastian in 1894. The St. Sava Church is the oldest Serbian Orthodox Church in the Western Hemisphere. The interment of Father Sebastian's remains in this historic church was preceded by their transfer from the other side of the world. Having been born in San Francisco and having labored for most of his life as a missionary throughout the United States, Father Sebastian spent his last years in his ancestral land of Serbia, where he reposed in Zicha Monastery on November 30, 1940. After Father Sebastian's body was buried in the snow-covered ground of the Zicha Cemetery by his spiritual friend and fellow missionary, St. Nikolai Vilomirovich of Zicha, his grave was marked by a simple cross. In the sixty-seven years that have passed since Father Sebastian's repose, Veneration for him by Orthodox Christians has taken root and grown. An impetus toward this veneration came on the tenth anniversary of his repose, when St. Nikolai of Zicha, then living in America, gave a beautiful speech on Father Sebastian's many accomplishments and virtues, calling his fellow Serbs to honor the memory of this modern-day apostle. After St. Nikolai, one of the first Orthodox writers to recognize and make known Father Sebastian's greatness was the co-editor of the Orthodox Word, Father Seraphim, then Eugene, Rose. In 1965, the 25th anniversary of Father Sebastian's repose and the first year of the Orthodox Word's publication, Father Seraphim wrote and printed an article on Father Sebastian, followed by a chapter, The True Church of Christ, from one of Father Sebastian's books. In his article, Father Seraphim wrote, Few Orthodox Americans are perhaps aware of the promising beginning of the Orthodox mission in the 18th and 19th centuries, when a serious attempt was undertaken to make the riches of Holy Orthodoxy accessible to Americans. One of the most notable examples and results of this missionary endeavor was the life and writings of Archimandrite Sebastian Dabovich. Years later, in talking about the beginning of American Orthodox missionary work in the English language in the early part of the 20th century, Father Seraphim called Archimandrite Sebastian the outstanding Orthodox missionary of that period. Over the years, articles and books on the history of Orthodoxy in America devoted special attention to Father Sebastian and his far-reaching influence. The many Serbian churches he founded or served in, as well as many non-Serbian ones, remembered with gratitude his pioneering missionary labors in America. Back in Serbia, however, Father Sebastian remained relatively unknown. The primary place of his apostolic work, the United States, was far away from the land where he had reposed and been laid to rest and the communist takeover of Serbia six years after his repose hindered contact between the two countries. By the 1980s, nothing was known about him at his resting place in Jicha Monastery, beyond the fact that he had been born in America. At this time, another American-born Serb, Mirko Dobrijevic, the future Bishop Irene of the Serbian Orthodox Diocese of Australia and New Zealand, began to research Father Sebastian's life. The more Mirko learned about Father Sebastian, the more he became inspired by his life and witness, and the more he came to love and revere him as a holy man of God. In 1984, Mirko went to Father Sebastian's resting place in Zicha for the first time. When I came to his grave, recalls the now Bishop Irene, I was heartbroken. There were literally two rusted metal bars wired together in the form of a cross, with his name partially preserved. Archim Sebastian. Nothing more. Though I knew that this was in keeping with his humble and austere way of life, I felt that he deserved far more from us who now reap the benefits of his apostolic labors. 
I then asked the late Bishop Stephan of Zsicsa in 1986 or 7 for permission to solicit funds for a proper marker on his grave. I collected funds from parishioners at Holy Resurrection Cathedral in Chicago, which Father Sebastian had founded. I was then the director of Christian education at the cathedral. And I placed an article in American Sorbobran and the Path of Orthodoxy, entitled Marking the Grave of Father Sebastian. At this point, some of his family stepped forward with donations. Enough money was collected to erect the gravestone. Bishop Stefan gratefully added the epitaph, the first American Serbian Orthodox Apostle. Soon afterward, iconographic renderings of Father Sebastian began to adorn the walls of Serbian Orthodox churches in America. In 1988, when Leonidas Diamontopoulos was commissioned to fresco the interior of the Holy Resurrection Cathedral in Chicago, the future bishop, Irene, sketched out iconographic renderings of Bishop Nikolai Vilomirovich and Father Justin Popovich to be placed to the right of the iconostasis and of Bishop Martarije, the first Serbian Orthodox Bishop of America, and Father Sebastian to be placed to the left. In subsequent years, iconographic frescoes of Father Sebastian, based on the same original sketch, were painted by Father Theodor Jerowitz on the walls of the church at New Grasanisa Monastery in Grays Lake, Illinois, and by Miloje Milonkovic on the walls of four churches, St. Sava Church in Libertyville, Illinois, St. George Church in Scherrerville, Indiana, Holy Assumption Church in Sacramento, California, and St. Sava Church in Jackson, California. At St. Sava Church in Jackson, Father Sebastian had never been forgotten. The parishioners had erected a marble monument to Father Sebastian in their cemetery, and for years they had cherished the hope that he would be brought back to them, that his remains would rest at the first church he founded in America. One parishioner in particular, Deacon Triva Pavlov, took the initiative in turning this wish into reality. In 2006, he received the support of the newly enthroned Bishop of the Serbian Orthodox Diocese of Western America, His Grace Bishop Maxim. In January of 2007, Bishop Maxim sent a letter to His Grace Bishop Rizostom of the Diocese of Zsica in Serbia, requesting that Father Sebastian's remains be brought from Zsica to Jackson. This letter was sent along with a letter from the clergy and the parish council president of the Jackson Parish, stating the same request. The matter was presented by Bishop Rizostom at the Holy Assembly of Bishops of the Serbian Orthodox Church in Belgrade, and the request was granted. Bishop Rizostom then wrote to Bishop Maxim, Your Grace, in connection with the February 13, 26, 2007 Resolution, number 145, section 94, of the Holy Synod of Bishops of the Serbian Orthodox Church, as a result of your January 25, 2007 letter, E. number 41, and the request of the St. Sava Church School Parish of Jackson, California, we give our archpastoral blessing and approval that the bodily remains of Archimandrite Sebastian Dabovich be transferred from Zsicsa Monastery to the Church of St. Sava in Jackson, Your Grace's brother in Christ and co-worker, Bishop Rizostom of Zsicsa. News of Father Sebastian's return to America was greeted with joy by the Serbian Orthodox Diocese of Western America. Bishop Maxim set up a committee for the organization of the transfer and welcome of Archimandrite Sebastian, which prepared for the reception of Father Sebastian's remains in America and for their interment in the St. Sava Church in Jackson. It was decided that the interment would take place in conjunction with the Diocesan Days gathering of the Serbian Diocese of Western America, which occurs every year on Labor Day weekend at the St. Sava Mission in Jackson a mile from the church. On Saturday, August 4, 2007, Father Sebastian's remains were exhumed from their grave in Zsicsa Monastery. Before the exhumation, the Divine Liturgy was served in the 13th century Zsicsa Monastery Church. 
Archimandrite Gerasim of Zsicsa presided, with Proto-Presbyter Juritsa Gordic concelebrating and two deacons assisting. Proto-Presbyter Juritsa was visiting from America, where he serves at the St. John the Baptist Serbian Orthodox Cathedral in San Francisco. It was by God's providence that this priest from Father Sebastian's birthplace and hometown in America was granted to be present in Jicha for the event of Father Sebastian's exhumation. That day a gentle rain covered the earth. Following the liturgy, the above-mentioned clergy, the nuns of Jicha Monastery, and assembled pilgrims ascended the hill above the monastery, where the monastic cemetery is located. There Father Sebastian had been buried, along with former bishops of Zicha, Stefan, and Vasilye. After over two hours of digging, Father Sebastian's copper casket was unearthed, and his bones were carefully taken from it. Immediately, a parastos, memorial service, was held for Father Sebastian in the cemetery chapel. The relics of Father Sebastian were sent to America on the following Wednesday, they arrived at the see of the Serbian Diocese of Western America in Alhambra, California, where Bishop Maxim clothed them in priestly vestments. Then, a few weeks later, they were taken to Jackson, where they were placed in a beautiful hardwood ossuary. During the preceding weeks, the ossuary had been lovingly made by Paul Sharp of the St. Gabriel Antiochian Orthodox Mission in the nearby town of Angel's Camp one of the many towns originally evangelized by Father Sebastian. On Saturday, September 1st, six hierarchs, thirty priests, six deacons, and numerous faithful gathered at the St. Sava Mission in Jackson to celebrate the transfer of Father Sebastian's relics from Serbia and their interment in the St. Sava Church. In the morning, the ossuary with the relics of Father Sebastian was met by the hierarchs, clergy, and faithful in front of the mission. It was carried in procession by three priests who now serve in parishes that Father Sebastian founded in the western United States over a century ago, in Jackson, Los Angeles, and Butte, and by one priest who serves in a city where the Orthodox community was first organized by Father Sebastian, Seattle. The hierarchical divine liturgy was then celebrated under a large canopy at the mission. The liturgy was celebrated outdoors at the mission because the large number of people could not be accommodated at the St. Sava Church. The liturgical celebration was presided over by Metropolitan Christopher of Midwestern America, Serbian Orthodox Church, with the concelebration of Metropolitan Joseph of the USA, Canada, and Australia, Bulgarian Orthodox Church, Archbishop Kirill of San Francisco and Western America, Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, and the Serbian hierarchs Bishop Irene of Australia and New Zealand, Bishop Porfirie of Yegar, and Bishop Maxim of Western America. The assembled priests and deacons who belonged to several different Orthodox jurisdictions in America took part in the service as well. All the dioceses of the Serbian Church in the United States and Canada were represented by the clergy and the faithful in attendance. With Bishop Maxim's blessing during the liturgy, Deacon Triva Pavlov was elevated to the rank of protodeacon by Bishop Irene. It was a fitting day for Deacon Triva's elevation, since, as we have seen, it had been through his initiative that the day's celebrations had been made possible. At the conclusion of the liturgy, a parastos was served for Father Sebastian with the blessing of Koliva. His eminence, Metropolitan Christopher, presided, sensing Father Sebastian's ossuary as he read and sang the prayers, and the hierarchs, clergy, and faithful participated in the singing. Bishop Irene then gave a moving sermon on the life of Father Sebastian. The sermon was spoken from the heart, without the aid of written notes. Hearing Bishop Irene's inspired words, one could sense that this moment and this day were a prelude to Father Sebastian's formal glorification as a saint of the Church. It was a prelude worthy of the man whom it extolled. Having greeted all those who had gathered, Bishop Irene began by recalling Father Sebastian's humble burial in Jicha Monastery many years previously, where he had died with almost no possessions. It was by all earthly standards and measures a pauper's funeral, his grace said, and yet 
Indeed, in many ways it was the most regal of coronations. It was the ushering into the kingdom of heaven of a man born so long ago here in America. At this point, Bishop Irenae ceased to address his audience and began to address Father Sebastian himself. In this, he demonstrated that Father Sebastian, whose relics then lay in an ossuary in front of the iconostasis, was not dead, but alive, that his immortal soul, having ascended to heaven to be with Christ and his saints, had been granted to be present with the faithful in Jackson that very day, even as his earthly remains awaited the general resurrection. Speaking alternately in English and Serbian, Bishop Irene addressed Father Sebastian as follows. Welcome, our holy and venerable Father Sebastian. Welcome, O first Serbian child born here on this American continent. Welcome back, holy missionary, you who spread Christ's gospel from one side of this continent to the other. Welcome, our holy and venerable Father, you who have established the Serbian Orthodox Church here as her founding father during this past century. Welcome, Holy Father, you who disregarded yourself for the sake of spreading the gospel of him who gave life, resurrection, and hope to you and to us. You who spread the gospel in far-off Japan, Russia, Serbia, but most of all to us here on this American continent. Welcome to your home, to this town of Jackson, where you built in the year 1894 this magnificent temple dedicated to the first Serbian saint and enlightener, Sava. And that temple still stands, and you yourself will be ushered in, in full glory by the hierarchs, the clergy, and the faithful of our church, to rest in that sanctuary which you have built with your own hands, that sanctuary which stands here in testimony to your apostolic endeavors and missionary zeal on this continent. Still addressing his words directly to Father Sebastian, Bishop Irenae outlined some of the main events of his life. His grace then called to mind two parallel manifestations of divine providence, that, whereas the relics of St. Nikolai of Zicha were brought from America to his birthplace in Lelich, Serbia, in 1991, so now the relics of Father Sebastian have made the opposite journey in having been brought to rest in his native state, of California. It was blessed Bishop Nikolai who laid you in the earth, the same earth from which you were taken and brought here to this your fatherland in America. And all according to God's marvelous providence, that same saint, Bishop Nikolai, who was born in Serbia and was buried here in America, returned to Serbia to lie in Lelich Monastery, where he radiates his joyful presence to all who come to venerate and call upon him and where he is a source of enlightenment to this very day to our Serbian people. In like manner, the Holy Synod of Bishops of the Serbian Orthodox Church have deigned to return you, Father Sebastian, so that you will be a luminary here in Jackson, California, as St. Nikolai is in Lelich. Your teachings, your legacy, your life, all that you did for us will continue to glow and to radiate from your presence here among us. You are by all standards, as Bishop Nikolai wrote of you, the greatest missionary of the Serbian Orthodox Church in the past century. And now you, Holy Father Sebastian, freed from all earthly constraints, again live and abide here among us. Teach us, Holy Father Sebastian, to be missionaries as you were. Teach us, Holy Father Sebastian, to give up all that we treasure, all that binds and fetters us to this earth, so that we too may find the same apostolic wings that you possessed, so that we, as you, may help spread, each according to his ability and the gifts which have been bestowed upon him, the gospel and the teachings of our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome home, our holy and venerable Father Sebastian. Pray to God for us, your sinful kinsmen. Holy Father Sebastian, as we pray for you, pray for us before the throne of the Lord, before whom you now stand in glory. Amen. Having thus finished his words to Father Sebastian, Bishop Irenae again addressed the assembled faithful, saying, May God grant the day of his illumination and glorification to come. Until that very day, may the Lord God be with us. Thank you, and God be with you until we meet again in his kingdom, which will know no end. 
Amen. At the conclusion of Bishop Irenae's sermon, Bishop Maxime went to the opened ossuary and placed an Archimandrite's pectoral cross on Father Sebastian's relics. He then poured wine, according to tradition, on the vestments that covered the remains. The hierarchs came up to venerate the relics, followed by the clergy and faithful. Each person was given a card with an iconographic rendering of Father Sebastian from the Church of St. Sava Monastery in Libertyville, Illinois. On the back of the card was printed a beautiful prayer written by Father Sebastian from his sermon, Thoughts for Good Friday at the Passion and Burial of Christ. After the veneration by the faithful, the ossuary was placed in a hearse, a procession of cars followed the hearse through the historic town of Jackson and soon arrived at the St. Sava Church. There, the aforementioned four priests carried the ossuary up the steep steps from the road to the hilltop church, passing through the cemetery. Halfway up, they were met by protodeacon Triva, who guided the ossuary into the church. The ossuary was placed on the ambo, by this time, the church was tightly packed with people. Metropolitan Christopher sent the relics and poured wine on the vestments that covered them for the second time. As he did so, everyone in the crowded church sang in unison, Vechnaya Pamyat, Memory Eternal, so loudly and with such prayerful feeling that it seemed that the walls shook. The ossuary was then placed in a waterproof concrete vault that had been constructed beneath the floor on the right side of the church. As the priests were slowly lowering the ossuary into the vault, suddenly and spontaneously everyone broke into singing the Paschal Troparian, Christ is Risen. The Troparian was sung in both Slavonic and English, and again it was poured forth with such feeling that the voices reverberated from the walls. It was the most spiritually uplifting moment of my life, Protodeacon Triva now recalls. With their heartfelt singing, the faithful were proclaiming that, because of Christ's victory over death, his faithful servant, Father Sebastian, now lived, and would live forever in God. This, Christ's trampling down death by death, was the central point of the very gospel that Father Sebastian had devoted his life to preaching and spreading, thus enabling countless others to gain eternal life in Christ as well. When the ossuary had been placed in the vault, a concrete lid was placed over the vault, and on top of it was placed a marble headstone. On the headstone were inscribed the words that had been previously written on Father Sebastian's gravestone in Zica, the first American Serbian Orthodox Apostle. At the bottom of the new headstone were added words anticipating Father Sebastian's listing in the calendar of saints. Holy Apostle Sebastian, Pray for us. Behind the headstone had been placed a large, upright, hardwood prayer box, also made by Paul Sharp. On the front of it was inscribed a verse from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, which Father Sebastian had taken as his motto in his missionary labors, Speak the truth in love. Below that was a verse from the Psalms of David, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. In the conviction that Father Sebastian is indeed among the saints, a slot was made in the top of the hardwood box so that the faithful could put in it written requests for Father Sebastian's heavenly intercessions. The site of Father Sebastian's relics in the St. Sava Church in Jackson is now a place of pilgrimage for Orthodox Christians throughout America and the world. Together with the relics, the Church treasures the miracle-working Jackson icon of the Mother of God, which was donated by the church's first hierarch, Bishop Nicholas Ziorov, around the time of its consecration. As Bishop Irenae indicated in his sermon, we now await Father Sebastian's formal glorification. The interment of his remains within the walls of the St. Saba Church and the glorious spiritual celebration that surrounded it may be seen as a step toward this yet more glorious moment. In the meantime, hierarchs of the Serbian Orthodox Church, together with hierarchs of other local Orthodox churches, have given their Amen to the cry that has sprung from the hearts of the faithful. Holy Father Sebastian, pray to God for us. Notes on the Veneration of Righteous Ones 
Bishop Irenae of Australia and New Zealand has noted that veneration of righteous ones in the church proceeds from God's revelation. God reveals the sanctity of the person's life, which evolves into local veneration by the faithful. In turn, that which God has revealed is crowned by the church with a formal proclamation of glorification. Bishop Maxime of Western America writes concerning the veneration of righteous ones before their formal glorification. In the Orthodox Church, veneration for a holy person is initiated by the pleroma of the church, the clergy, and the faithful. Usually, veneration entails a concurrence of local respect and synodal recognition. Sometimes the faithful begin to ask the holy person's intercessions on the local level, and later Orthodox hierarchs, based on what the people of God have already proclaimed through this veneration, make a conciliar decision to enter the name of the holy person in the calendar of saints, which is the Orthodox tradition, an act commonly known as canonization or glorification. Before the canonization, the church does not celebrate services in honor of the holy person. Not infrequently, however, the faithful ask that person's heavenly intercessions, paint pre-canonization iconographic portraits of him, and in some cases even call him saint, which means holy. Such was the case with St. Nikolai of Zicha, who was called saint by the faithful long before his name was entered into the calendar of saints by the Holy Assembly of Serbian Orthodox Bishops in 2003.